Welcome back, this is Dr. Jane Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. On my last video, we talked about some of the statistics of pre-diabetes and diabetes here in the United States. It's basically one in four individuals who have pre-diabetes and diabetes. It's really a epidemic that is brewing and that's being managed poorly just by medications, right? There are things you can do, but you have to understand the vicious loops that it can occur because of high sugar or insulin resistance or diabetes, right? So uh, in the diagram behind me, there's a lot of arrows. It looks a little confusing, but I'll try to go step by step and try to explain to you the vicious loops that can occur as a result of high blood sugar. So let's get into it. Insulin resistance or high sugar or diabetes in the vicious cycle. So hyperglycemia, right? This is the pre-diabetic diabetic patient who has high levels of sugar in the blood. Hyperglycemia will create insulin resistance. What that means is if you take in a lot of sugar, your body's pancreas has to produce insulin. It produces excessive amounts of insulin the cells for insulin become resistant and you need more insulin and more insulin. So you develop a resistance to insulin to take the sugar because of high sugar levels. When that happens, your, your sugar levels will continue to go up because your insulin receptors are, are, are down and it can't take the sugar into the cells. Along with hyperglycemia comes what we call glycated end products. What that means is sugar will attach to either lipids or proteins, and it'll change the formation, right? It's basically aging it. So the glycation of an end product, proteins and fats, if you think about it like um, uh, if you cook on the grill and you really get a nice char on a steak, that is a glycated end product right? You're doing damage to the protein. The glycated end products will create inflammation because it's been damaged and it causes inflammation will in, in itself will cause glycated end products. So this kind of vicious cycle going back and forth between inflammation and the product of glycation or sugar attachment to lipids and proteins. Glycated end products, because it's damaged proteins and lipids, goes into the cut, gut and creates leaky gut or intestinal permeability, right? Intestinal permeability will allow endotoxins. Things that should not cross the gut barrier will start to cross into the bloodstream, like lipopolysaccharides, right? Or toxins, any toxins. It'll start crossing into the bloodstream. And once that happens, you're going to have TRL, TLR, I'm sorry, activation, toll-like receptor. These are a class of um, proteins that is responsible for immune responses, right? So you're activating an immune response when you have endotoxemia or leaky gut, right? And then that activation also increases inflammation, increasing glycated end products, and then there are receptors, things that will bind to these glycated end products, and they're called rage reactions. Receptors for advanced glycated end products. Once that is activated, now you have increased in insulin, back to insulin resistance and back and forth over here. And then when you have hyperinsulinemia, high insulin, you can activate fat cells, adipocytes. Right? When you activate fat cells, what does it do? It creates inflammation. So when you look at this cycle, there is a back and forth mechanism where these cycles will occur, one creating another and the other creating a problem back. So this is this vicious cycle of high sugar, inflammation, uh, immune response, high insulin, and going back and forth and back and forth. Right? How do we break this vicious loop? One of the most important ways to do it is to stop the insulin surges. Stop the body from producing insulin by taking in less sugar. That is one of the um, 
foundational pieces. How do you do that? Sometimes we'll use a ketogenic diet or ketogenic diet using more fats as a source of calories rather than sugar, right? So ketogenic diets are typically about 70% fat calories, 25% uh, protein, and about 5% carbs. And it will produce ketones to be used for fuel rather than sugar. So in order to break this vicious cycle, one of the first things we might have to do for a patient is put them on a ketogenic diet. So just to recap, if you have high blood sugar, it creates insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, causes inflammation, immune responses, leaky gut, endotoxemia, where you get things into the bloodstream that should not cross, of activating the immune system, causing more inflammation. And guess what? This will eventually affect the brain. Because if you get leaky gut, it's going to break down the blood-brain barrier and it's going to create issues at the brain level low-grade inflammation, cognitive decline, short-term memory loss, and so forth, okay? It's very um, important for you to understand that this vicious loop has to be broken. And over the next several weeks, we're gonna go deep into diabetes, insulin resistance, or low blood sugar or hypoglycemia, and how all these things impact our systems. Because when you get end glycated end products, right? because of sugar attachment to lipids and proteins, what are you doing? You are creating a environment for cardiovascular disease, blood clots, stroke, right? High blood pressure. All these things can occur just because there's too much sugar and too much insulin in our system. So it's very important to break this cycle uh, for long-term health because what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up on one medication, two medications, three medications, four medications, because sugar ine inevitably will also increase cholesterol. And then you'll be on a cholesterol med too. So to break this vicious cycle, it takes a little bit of um, work on your part and uh, persistence uh, to break this vicious cycle, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.